Four score and seven years ago. I know this speech. <laughs> I think everyone pretty much everyone it. does, yeah. Alicia. But, you know, isn't it amazing that a political leader in 1863 on a battlefield gives this speech and it's still extremely famous yeah. today, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think we're all still really affected by Lincoln's language and his humility and really his grace in a big way. You're a big fan. <laughs> I am a big fan, actually. But let's dive right into this because I have my own study group back on campus in just a little bit. Okay. Um, so 1863, that's the speech. So can anybody um, tell me what's the significance of that date? Oh, that was right in the middle of the Civil War. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the war started 1861 mm -hmm. and didn't end until 1865. So, uh took another two years after he said the right. speech. Yeah, well, I did some research, too, and I actually read that Gettysburg is what made clear that the Civil War was not ending anytime soon. So Lincoln at that time was in danger of losing popular support for continuing the fight. Good job, guys. So, you know, obviously there's a lot going on in his mind as he's traveling to Gettysburg, right? Mm -hmm. At this point, he can't really predict how it's going to end up. You know, he, he, he doesn't know at this point who's going to win. Right. I mean, that that sort of seems like it would present a particular problem for Lincoln, don't you think? Well, yeah, I think it makes his job harder. I mean, that's for sure. Right, and what job is that? Well, I mean, he's dedicating the battlefield, right? He's saying all the soldiers that died at Gettysburg didn't die in vain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's definitely harder to do when you're still in the middle of a war oh, effort. Sure. Yeah, how intense is that? I mean, Lincoln has to prove that this battle is significant, even if there's a lot more fighting to be yeah. done. Yeah. And who's to say for sure the soldiers didn't die in vain, you know? Good. Good. So I, we all agree, right, that Lincoln has some very specific goals going into this speech. Mm -hmm. um, let's look at the assignment. Who wants to read me the prompt? I got it. In this speech, Lincoln honors the fallen at Gettysburg. However, after looking closely at his words, what do you think might be Lincoln's greater objective? In what ways do Lincoln's choice of words help achieve that objective? That's a good prompt. Okay, so um, so it, it tells us that um, Lincoln's first objective is to honor the fallen at Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. Where exactly in the speech do we see that? Well, kind of early on, he says, um, where is it? okay, he says, we have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. So he's making the, 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 the battlefield a national landmark. Yes, but yeah. what nation is he talking about? Oh, I thought about that. For Lincoln, there's only one nation, right? America. The, the United States. Right. But for the Confederates, they're fighting for a different one, the one that seceded from the Union. Mm -hmm. Great point. So does that give anybody ideas about what that bigger objective might be? He does say that uh, it is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. What do you think that unfinished work is? Winning the war, right? Yeah, I mean, he wants everyone to resolve to continue to fight, right? Mm -hmm. To be dedicated to the great task remaining. Is it just about winning the war, though? I think Lincoln also wants everyone, you know, to continue to support the values the soldiers were fighting for. Okay, and what values are those? Yes. Okay, <laughs> so let's start with this. Uh, what are the soldiers fighting for? Democracy. Yes, in part. Okay, but what was the Civil War about? Like, what are the two different sides of the country fighting over? Slavery, right? right. Yeah. yeah, the North uh -huh. wanted to end it, and the South wanted to keep it legal. Right, there's definitely more to it than that, but that's a good start. What else? Like what Sasha said before, secession. You know, right. the South, what they wanted was to split and become their own country. Yeah. Okay, and as president of the United States of America, what does Lincoln want? Well, he wants to put it back together, preserve yeah. the Union. Totally. So <clears throat> we take the United States for granted at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, at the time of the speech, the U.S. is 87 years old, Yeah, four right? score and seven years right. old. And it might not survive. Mm -hmm. So that's a no. pretty big objective. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, and the northern soldiers, they died for... Their country, you know, they wanted to keep together. Lincoln, he draws attention to that, you know? he Not only their sacrifice, like their lives, but their goals. Mm -hmm. well, making people think about right, it. Right, but I mean, if Lincoln thinks there's only one nation here, then aren't all the soldiers, Union and Confederate, just Americans with different goals? That's a really good question. Yeah. Thoughts? Lincoln uses his language pretty carefully here. He talks about how the whole battlefield shows the test of whether a democracy like America can survive. 
but only a portion of the field, the cemetery, is actually dedicated to the dead soldiers. Dead Union soldiers only? Exactly. So oh. what does that mean to you guys? Lincoln's dedicating the cemetery, right? But I think he's working a political message, too. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, he starts off by saying how the Founding Fathers created America, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Good yeah, that's Education. like the Declaration of Independence. Uh, mm. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And keep in mind, too, that Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. For the slaves, Freeing yeah. all the slaves, right, just four months before this speech. So... Soon. Yeah. So he's reminding everyone that freedom and equality were one of America's original goals. Good. And that's what the Union soldiers, you know, died for at Gettysburg. Yeah, he says that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. Yes, Ben? Well, I mean, to me, it's all about his language, you know? It's, it's simple and subtle, but it's poetic, you know? I mean... Like, the words, like, devotion and dedication, they're just... Well, yeah, <laughs> nice alliteration, man, but you're right. I mean, so Lincoln starts off by using the word dedicated to talk about the battlefield, right? But then he ends up using it to increase dedication to the war. Yeah. Same with devoted. We should be devoted to the cause that they devoted their lives to in death. Yeah, yeah. and well, so, so the importance of that is? It helps us answer our prompt. Lincoln uses his choice of words to prove that his goals are the same goals as the Founding Fathers. So he's reminding everyone that his political agenda is historically the basic political agenda of the country. And he's not just, like, commemorating the soldiers. He's reminding everyone what the United States is about, you know, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. It's an appeal to patriotism. I think he's Good. hoping that by sparking a passion for their country, it'll spark a passion in them to fight for it. Well, I think they have the passion, yeah. but he's just reminding them. Right. Like we already said, they're two years into this war, and mm. they've got two more years to go. So Lincoln needs all the support and all the passion he can get, right, to keep people invested in the cause. And it's not just America, you know, as the cause. It's the survival of democracy as a whole. I kind of think you should slow down because I think that's a broad statement. Mm, right? No, he <laughs> says that uh, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. I mean, mm -hmm. if America can't like make de democracy work, then like who can? Like At that point in time, America was like the only successful democracy. Everyone's watching, so just yeah. a little pressure, right? Yeah. <laughs> just a little. Yeah, no kidding. He's the president, <laughs> right? and the country's straight falling apart on his watch. He's got to pull out the big guns. Well, know? I mean, I think he uses the moment to his advantage. How? Well, it's a burial ground, right? Everyone who's there is thinking about death and dying, but he turns it around to um, the new birth of freedom that will come after all of this. <laughs> so the country is being threatened, and people are losing their lives, but if they continue on, then the country will be reborn. And yeah. that's important. Yeah, and in that setting, it'd be pretty convincing. Lincoln is using all of the methods that you guys identified. And you're right, the stakes are enormously high. Mm -hmm. So let's just go back through the speech. I want you to really focus on finding textual evidence to support your opinions. Is that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't believe he thought that no one would remember what he said. Like, he says... The world will little note nor long remember what we say here. He doesn't know his own power. That kind of seems like you're liking him too now, Ben, huh? No, but that's a really good example of textual evidence. Yeah. So, like, keep him coming. More. She'd like to study a lot. <laughs>